we bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of a servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. Lord, in your presence today, there is fullness of joy. And that joy is what we invite today. May that joy be our portion in the name of Jesus. We come to you with different burdens, with different yokes. But we believe that in your presence there is fullness of joy. Let that fullness of joy be our portion in the name of Jesus. Whatsoever thing that will stand against our blessings today, we come against it. May your spirit descend from above. Father Lord, we ask that you help us this day. Even as we look into your word, we ask that your presence will interpret to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Uh, yesterday we talked about yesterday we talked about faith today. Faith today. And today we want to continue from there. But today we want to talk about hindrances to genuine faith. Hindrances to genuine faith. What do we mean by hindrances to genuine faith? Hindrances are obstacles, obstructions, blockages, things that want to stop you from getting where you want to get to, things that pose themselves like oppositions. There are hindrances to genuine faith. We know that uh, the Christian faith is not always what we say it is. It is what the Bible says it is. So we can say that this is what uh, uh, I believe. Then God could say, no, this is what I say you should believe. These are two different things entirely. Sometimes people tend to follow what they believe and not actually what God wants them to believe. That is not a genuine faith. Genuine faith is following what God says you should follow. Believing what God says you should believe. And disbelieving what God wants you not to believe. There are hindrances to genuine faith today. For instance, somebody that is passing through challenges, the challenges could turn out to become hindrances to that person's faith. If the person allows the challenges to become hindrances. Challenges don't come to destroy us. But when people allow them, give them the opportunity to destroy them, challenges will now destroy them. If our faith is not put to test, then that faith can never grow up to maturity. If our faith is not put to trial, then it cannot grow. The Bible says that we should consider it all joy when we pass through diverse temptations. Count it all joy, brethren, when you, as a believer, when you pass through different kinds of temptations. That's James chapter 1, verse 2 and 3. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. So, uh, when we have genuine faith, that faith is definitely going to be put to test. But when it is put to test, what should be our reaction? The reaction is actually what God concerns himself with. God does not dwell in what we are passing through. He concerns himself mainly with 
our reaction and how we are going to overcome it. Praise the Lord. The Christian faith today is facing a lot of oppositions. Genuine faith. I know why I decided to speak the word genuine faith. Because it's not every faith that is actually genuine. Satan has faith. Satan has faith in God. Satan has been with God and he has faith. But he doesn't have genuine faith. He believes and trembles. His kind of belief brings trembling to him. He believes that God exists. Is it it? Satan believes that God exists. Satan believes that God is a God of justice. But that his belief has refused to yield positive results in his life because he has chosen to do evil. It's a matter of choice. Today, there are so many things that are opposing the genuine Christian faith. So many things that if you give your attention to them, you discover that um, you will be lagging behind and not pleasing God. The Bible says, Paul writing to Timothy, says that he who has enlisted himself, who has been enlisted as a soldier of Jesus Christ, does not supposed to entangle himself with the affairs of this life. Soldiers don't think the way honorary civilians think. They have a way they think. They don't react to situations the same way civilians react to situations. Because these people have been trained to react in a certain way. They have been subject to receiving pains and be trained not to complain. Soldier can be hiding in a place and a scorpion could climb on top of that soldier. Or a snake, a serpent could be there in the same place. And because they are on a mission, because they are betrayed, they will not scream and jump out. Why? Because if they do that, they will expose themselves to danger and the attack of the enemy. So, the same, the same challenge, different reactions from different kinds of people. What is the difference? Because a soldier has been trained. For us who are soldiers of Jesus Christ, we don't supposed to react to hindrances to our genuine faith the way ordinary people react to situations. We hear a lot of people say, if not for Jesus, eh? if not because of my faith in Jesus Christ, I would have done this. But because I trust in Jesus because of my Christian faith, I don't want to do this. But the same situation, you could see people who will say, today we will die. Because you have done this, we will die. There are so many hindrances. But except we understand our position and where we are going to, we will not be able to react positively. The way God wants us to react to situations. Praise the Lord. Number one hindrance, this time around, the number one hindrance to genuine faith is deception. Number one hindrance to genuine faith is deception. If you read Matthew chapter 24, where the disciples came to ask Jesus what the sign of the end will be, and the things he spoke about, when will these things be? And also, they asked him of the sign of his second coming, of his return. And Jesus told them many, many things. But before Jesus Christ started telling them every other thing, he gave them a warning first. And it, in verse 4, it says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Deception. 
Deception today is a very powerful tool that is making the faith of many to was cold. Just this night, I was uh, discussing with someone doing counseling, and the person uh, told me that do you know that uh, uh, many uh, that she has met one up to two three persons who have gotten married eh? who went through uh, counseling and during their counseling they were asked to go and test themselves in bed a man of god telling them that uh, though they say this but see practically the truth is that you are free to go and test yourself go and sleep together enjoy yourself deception there are many people today who are answering the name uh, prophet apostle bishop archbishop pastor evangelist who are deceivers who are who deceivers god did not call them they are just in to cause confusion there are others who are out because Satan actually sent them a message to go and cause confusion. Many of these houses were witch doctors, Babalawo, herbalist, eh? uh, where they used to live and run their business. The, let me just say so the meaning of what we see herbalists to be, the true meaning of a herbalist is somebody who uses herbs to heal people. Eh? But here, yeah, many people who are herbalists, they do evil. Is that not so? Yes. So when I say herbalists, I mean witch doctors. Babalawo. Many of those shrines have been converted to churches day and when you go there they will call the name of jesus deception is very high there is one big church in this country somebody who wanted to run for governorship in fact the person was running for governorship in one of these states and they had to meet a man of god for sponsorship and for prayers and the PA of this man of God, the churches are everywhere. The signboard, they write the name very big. He said, if you must go, you have to be ready to comply. Before we allow you to see the man of God, you have to comply. And this is what and what and what and what you need to do. This man is very generous. Very, very generous, this man of God. Very, very generous in this country has churches everywhere so they told them uh, you need to when the man came out he said if i want to join a court i should not join a court from church deception is very very high just last year i met a sister who traveled to one of these states where people from many many countries visit and she was initiated into a court from a church she was initiated and the so-called man of god used to visit her in the spirit world she was given something and she was already inside before she knew she said she was sitting in a congregation the man of god said you will see me later. Pointing other people, you see me later. See me. So that see me later was for initiation. And that was how she was initiated. Deception is very, very high today. So we have to be careful. If you have the truth, don't move anyhow. Problems should not make you to run anyhow. In this our environment, Christianity is very shallow. 
when people meet with challenges they can run to anything that is called a prophet for solution they don't care it's none of their business they are very much concerned about their solution how solution must come at all costs if it's a baby they want to have the baby at all costs whether from babalawo whether it's another man that will do the thing that will put the baby there it's none of their business the thing is i want my testimony they are concerned about the testimony why don't you go and adopt a child some of us christians see adopting adoption as somebody who has no faith someone who has no faith that adopts children god you must give me my own now your own is not coming won't you live your life you see marriages that are crashing couples who are not happy with their marriage some of them they have money they have everything they have good heads but because children are not coming the marriage will become a battleground and they are christians is that what the bible says the bible says cast all your cares all your worries, all your burden, cast them upon Jesus. Cast them upon him. Why? Because he cares for you. Me have my challenges, but I have chosen that in the midst of my challenges, I will live a happy life. Live a happy life. Enjoy my life. Life is short. I don't need to spend it uh, in sorrow, in sadness. No. Just this January, past January, I went to somewhere. I did video. I was talking with a sister abroad and uh, I was talking on WhatsApp. So when I was coming, I was in the uh, tricycle. So I was coming. She, we were still talking on phone until I got home, opened my door. So I was copying the things from my phone. Uh, three videos. I was copying either three or two. I was copying them from my phone. And something happened, I copied everything into my flash. And I was trying to copy them into my computer. The thing became corrupt. So I sent it to the friend on phone. I said, this file has become corrupt. They are asking me to format my uh, flash. But finally, 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 I lost everything. And I was laughing. She was asking me, but you just lost something now. Why are you laughing? I said, should I keep myself? Because I lost something. Now I should start crying. Isn't it? It's gone. So let bygone be bygone. It's gone. So I should not spoil the rest of my day because I traveled to somewhere to do, a, to do videos and the videos got lost. Is it not me that did the videos? Can't I do them again? Can't I repeat them? Can't I go back and repeat them? So why should I sorrow? I should learn my lessons that when I am copying files, I should not move them. I should copy and still leave the original there in case anything happens to this one. I learned my lessons. And since then, I don't move. There are people whose challenges have become hindrances to their christian belief even when you have a child maybe husband and wife they have no children and now arrange a man who will do the work that will bring the baby and then the baby comes out for the rest of your life you will know that you are not the father of that child is it it even when the child does anything wrong and you are uh, scolding the child. Junior, why must you do this? I am your father. Another voice will tell you, you are not the father, you are lying. Even the woman, if you go and bring something into the house and claim that that child is a biological child of the man, anytime you are telling the man, 
But consider now, this is your son. This is your first son. Your spirit will be telling you, do you know that after Satan, you are the next biggest liar? Your spirit will be asking you. So why put yourself in bondage forever? Don't you live your life and be happy. Happy with your God. Happy with the little you have. Praise the Lord. So challenges, challenges, trials in life can become hindrances to genuine Christian faith. But the same Bible we read, Matthew chapter 7, tells us in verse 7 that we should ask, we shall be given, we should uh, seek, shall find we should knock and it shall be opened unto us but we should also know that for God's own wisdom uh, God's own purpose in his own wisdom he can choose not to give to us now or choose not to give to us at all that is why in Matthew chapter 6, before Jesus talked about ask, he had earlier warned. He had earlier warned that we should not be worried in life. So worries, 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 worries is a big challenge, hindrance to genuine Christian faith. Another big challenge too is the multiplication of religion. Religions are just multiplying as even as we are talking now. You may be surprised that somebody is trying to form his own religion. How many of us know that football is a religion? Football. You know, you are aware. Football. Initially, it was an honorary exercise eh, that unites people together. Today, some people have turned football to their religion. So, my church, people who don't know the names of Jesus' disciples, they know the names of all the players in Baka. All the players in my United, they know their official age, the amount they are paid. Ask them, what is the name of the mother of Jesus? They don't know. If they are playing football, Sunday morning, for those who worship on Saturday, Saturday morning, and the time is clashing. With the service time, who be God? They will go. This is something they are recording that you can watch the replay at any convenient time. But that live match, they want to be there. God can wait. So, who is now God? Is it the football or Jehovah? There are many religions today that so much confusion is in the world now that people begin to ask, are we really sure that Christianity is the right way? Are we really sure that we are not making mistakes? Why not Islam? Why not Judaism? Why not Buddhism? Why not uh, African... Uh, traditional religion a lot of confusion but Satan is not a fool even in Christianity you have some denominations who are not Christians at all there was one woman met me in the market I was talking and I said I'm no longer seeing my children no. 
Uh, why did you take my children for me? She took the children to a white garment church. So I was talking to her. She said, uh, but we are all one. I said, no. We are not one. No. She said, uh, we are not one. I said, no. We are not one. We don't have the same belief. Jesus has been sacrificed for us. There is no other sacrifice. In Christianity, we don't take people's wives to the stream to bait them. We don't organize uh, special programs for people and we ask them to come to our house and spend nights there. We don't do that. In Gabriel, don't visit people with white and white in the night in Christianity. That you are in Gabriel, we don't do all those things. People are saying Jah Jehovah and they are doing evil in the name of Jah Jehovah. Gabriel. We don't do that. We don't burn yellow and red candle. And uh, in fact, I am not when I say white garment church. It's not all of them. But uh, let me not mention any name. Uh, what I'm saying now will be aired on radio. But. I am telling you that many of these ones, we are not one. If they are, how do you know that we are not one? If their faith is not in alignment with this Bible, they are on their own. Do you understand me? If they don't believe everything here, we are not one. A lot of confusion. So many religions, even some who are Christians, still belong to Ikaka, Boni, uh, different, different kind of secret societies. Great message. In those days, some of these ones, they we are not uh, operating in the open, but today, they even go for evangelism. <laughs> May God deliver us in Jesus' name. So because of this, religions multiplying, people have begun to question themselves. Some Christians are questioning themselves. Am I sure that Jesus is really the way, the truth, and the life? Me, I stopped going to church some time ago. Specifically 2005. There, I had so many questions. 2005, I had received the call of God. Just finished from secondary school. It was in secondary school I received the call of God. And I know this is the work I'm going to do. And that this is how I am going to do it. And that this is how I am going to preach. Because that is how God asked me to preach. So if you think you have money and that you can change this message, it is a lie. Money will not work. You can't confuse this message by God's grace. It is raw and direct. You know, sometimes there is a way you are poor and you enjoy your poverty. Eh? That even those who are rich will begin to jealous you in your poverty. I'm in that class. When uh, people's vehicle break down, they are looking for mechanic. Me, if my keke breaks down, I call another one. Yes. I told someone, I say, all this. He said, did you drive to this place? Did you drive? I said, no. He said, I told the person, all these tricycles you see on the road, all of them belong to me. Anyone I want to call, I call and I fly. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and I do it with enjoyment. It's a lot of confusion. I am not a Christian. I'm not working for God because I was born into church. I was born into Christianity. As a matter of fact, I was born inside a church building like this, inside church, not hospital, inside church where I was born. Then, lawlessness. Lawlessness in the land. Second, Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3 says, Let no man deceive you by any means, 
for the day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition matthew 24 12 and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall was cold there will be lawlessness and the lawlessness has started lawlessness even among christians that many people don't even obey ushers from the point of entering the church they are started exhibiting lawlessness please sit here they said no i have my seat there lawlessness that a man of god could be preaching and somebody could be making call in the same church and shouting on top of his voice that his voice will be higher than the voice of the preacher lawlessness how many of us are aware that a prostitute in 18th century and many of the prostitutes in 19th century are well dressed than many married women today eh? prostitutes mama when you small now like these people the naked worker even people wear tie cutting those days they're the naked like this the lawlessness is much that today married women are doing competition with prostitutes because they don't want anybody to take their husbands from them so they believe that it is the way those people are looking hot that is uh, what we keep the man at home but go close to them you will see very offensive character in them all those things will not keep the man have good character have good character feed him on the table feed him at night too every time he needs you feed him physical food and food in the night feed him very well then give him respect if you respect a man even if he's an imbecile eh, the moment you are respecting him his movement will be straight so if you like go half naked and you don't respect the man and deceiving yourself he will only lust after you and will not love you there is lawlessness in the land today that even those many of those institutions that are supposed to maintain law and order are even the most lawless in our nation a man in uniform has a license illegal license to blow one way in our country isn't it they drive against traffic and nobody says anything because they see themselves as a law the question is will all these things change your christian faith will you allow these things to affect your faith negatively let us remember that no matter what we face no matter how lawless everybody is no matter how sinful the world becomes the judgment is going to be on individual basis god is not going to call a whole community and ask the community how did you live no it is hosanna sir come and give account it is individuals i have resolved that even if there is lawlessness in the town when i drink sachet water can water i don't throw the can on the road when i'm traveling when i break my granite i break them into something and dispose them well sometimes when i put my hand into my pocket i see uh, recharge cards the one i've recharged paper I see them and i dispose them well because the fact that everybody 
wants to make the nation dirty. Are you everybody? Are you everybody? You are yourself. So the fact that everybody is doing it does not mean that you should do it. You are the light of the world. So if everywhere is darkness and you are the only light and Jesus expects you to shine the light in that place and you will begin to imitate darkness. No. I don't know how this message has affected you. Maybe pass it through one thing. But the advice to us today is that don't allow that thing to take away your joy, take away your peace, most importantly, affect your faith in God. Let's be on our faith to pray. There are so many hindrances to the Christian faith. Open your mouth and talk to God that God, nothing will stop me. Nothing will stop me from becoming what you want me to be. Quickly open your mouth and talk to Him. Nothing will stop me from being the Christian you want me to be. Nothing will stop me from becoming a faithful servant you want me to be. Nothing will stop me from remaining the faithful servant that you have called me to be. In Jesus' name we pray. We got you. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website www.egoeyeopener.com Email us at rosannadavid at ymail.com or info at egoeyeopener.com God bless you.